right, so this is uh, Jen T. Grace of Publisher Purpose Press, and I am thrilled to interview yet another one of our awesome PYP authors, Mark S. Miller. Hey, Mark, how are you? Great, Jen, and thank you. It's a wonderful, warm fall afternoon here in downtown White Plains. It's a pleasure to see you and have a chance to uh, discuss uh, the book and to hear, see and hear you all at once. Yes, which is yes. Uh, we've been doing a lot of communication via the phone, so I hear your voice all the time, and now uh, you know, we're right. sitting face to face, which is awesome. So uh, as you and I were just talking about, you know, today's format is our Q&A with the author. So my goal for today is to just kind of share who you are, what you do, what your book is about, and just kind of organically take the conversation from there. So anyone who might be interested in your topic, which is around uh, technology and gaining clout and human resources and just a lot of different stuff, um, why don't we start off with who you are briefly and then we can get into your book. My pleasure. Uh, again, this is uh, me. I'm Mark Miller. I'm the president and founder of my own consultancy for over 35 years, uh, Mark S. Miller Associates. Uh, I've been involved in working in HR and HR's use of technology for even longer than that. Um, I've been um, uh, working uh, as on my own since 1983 when I founded Mark S. Miller, but before that, I was actually uh, working for one of the vendors that founded the whole industry of HR technology. And before that, uh, I was with Merrill Lynch. And after Mark S. Miller started in 1983, I, I interrupted my, my tenure as, a, as the president and founder with uh, two years with um, um, uh, Merrill Lynch and PricewaterhouseCoopers and then Towers Perrin and now called Wilson, Wilson, Willis Watson. But anyway, my background has all been, if I go even further back, I was a chemist oh, wow. <laughs> when I first graduated, really. But my, my, my interest has always been involved with the role of HR and, it, and the fact that uh, HR has had a variety of, uh, of uh, adjectives thrown at it over the years, record keeper, administrator, uh, do nothing, um, bureaucratic, et cetera. And, over the years, I've come to learn that with technology, uh, HR certainly uh, has transitioned into being a strategic business partner. And over the years, I've talked uh, as a consultant and working with my clients and helping them evaluate software that's available to them from vendors like in the older days, it's, it was PeopleSoft and now it's Workday and Ultimate and Ceridian and Kronos and many vendors. In fact, one of my colleagues told me that in the HR technology world, there's probably 3,000 software providers that have functionality related to the things that HR does, from, from applicant tracking all the way to retirement and post-retirement, et cetera. So there's a lot of functionality that's built into an integrated HR management system, which I call HRMS. By the way, I want to add that in addition to my consulting work and obviously writing and speaking and uh, keynote and uh, breakout sessions, I am also an adjunct professor at three universities teaching human resources management. So uh, the, my passion is there, which, which itself was combined into the wonderful book that we put together, uh, dealing with uh, the role of HR and also my interest in science fiction and also my interest in film noir look and uh, detective uh, movies, and you can see that when you look at the book. But uh, in terms of human resources management, I've always been um, a proponent of the role that HR needs to take, and that the technology today uh, has replaced uh, the people behind the scenes in the function of HR. No longer do employees have to call HR to accomplish anything uh, that they themselves can do with employee self-service and manager self-service in the software that's provided from any number of vendors. Mm -hmm. um, tons of vendors, some that are integrated with HR, payroll and benefits, and some that just do a niche functionality like mm -hmm. applicant tracking, talent management, time and attendance, succession planning, mm -hmm. and it goes on and on. Yeah. So I've been helping my clients over all these years in doing needs analysis, vendor evaluation, uh, contract negotiations, uh, project management, 
Um, but I've transitioned to more and more speaking, mm -hmm. more and more teaching, and more and more thought leadership and writing. And uh, I've been very fortunate to have you in my corner. So it's great. Yeah. And so tell me more about, like, let's talk about the book for a minute, because I find every way that you approach this just fascinating. It's very eccent um, eccentric. We'll just um, like, Fair enough. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> like thinking about HR, I feel like a lot of people have very, I don't know, specific thoughts and visions they might have about human resources and they might have, they might be casting some kind of projection on what they would expect you to do or act like as you're in front of a group of audiences. However, um, it is probably nothing like what one would expect. So walk us through how you came to kind of add this theatrical right. component to okay. both your writing and how you present your topic. That's a fair question and, and an interesting one. I've given it some thought. I would say that it started uh, maybe a couple of years ago when I did a PowerPoint presentation on who killed Harriet Rose job. That was the title of the PowerPoint. And I, I didn't think about making it as into quote a show, which eventually went into the keynote presentations that I do around the country. But the title stuck with me and I've had some pushback from friends and relatives saying, well, why did you make Harriet Rose job, meaning HR job, um, a woman as opposed to a man? And I said, well, the data is there that anybody who's been in HR for the last five to 10 years and the, and the prototype of an HR person behind the scenes was, was a female administrator controlling the rules and regulations of a company and filing government forms like EEO and, and other types of uh, tracking that's required by the federal government for, um, uh, based on legislation. But I always had the concept of the death of Harriet Rowe's job because she was viewed uh, as a as a obstacle uh, by many people, either internally in a company or externally dealing with a company mm -hmm. um, for many years. That obviously has changed in the last 15 to 20 years with good technology, freeing up the people in HR, and that's part of my message, to be much more proactive uh, modeling, using models, using forecasts, using predictive analytics, using the technology that's available. But in the early days, HR was the record keeper, the rules enforcer, um, the people you called to find out how many vacation days you had left, the people you called to find out um, uh, how many sick days I have left, can I apply for a training course, can I take a vacation, um, I have a complaint about my performance appraisal. All of these things were, were administratively handled. I called it administrative. So it led to the fact that Harriet Rose Job, who might find herself working for a company that said, hey, no more of this. We want to move forward. We want to be uh, strategic. We want to have a nimble workforce. We want to have qualities of our people who uh, can move, a, move on the dime, who can make great decisions, and we need an HR function to help us get that workforce. And if that HR person is not used to being that kind of proactive uh, and, um, and, and feeling more forward thinking and strategic, they might end up being targeted, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that led to uh, the concept of the first PowerPoint I did, which might have been five to 10 years ago. But what really crystallized into the book was I had to do a disrupt HR, a disrupt presentation here in Westchester about a year or two ago. And I gave him the title, not really realizing that I had to do a five minute presentation with 20 slides, which I lose control of. But I did come up with the idea and I've always been good in front of groups. I've always enjoyed getting uh, in front on stage. And I realized that uh, the concept of a detective and, and looking like a gumshoe uh, uh, resonated and it helps me tell the story and, and mm -hmm. I've been reading a lot about storytelling and um, so I did that with Disrupt HR and it got a lot of interesting comments. I dressed up in a Burberry raincoat and I had a fedora and I had a whistle and I had a badge and I had a couple of slides and of course lost control of the slides because you have no control in a Disrupt five minute webinar uh, seminar or meeting. So yeah but, but this was the keynote, uh, Jen, that I f finally made. But the first disrupt was me on stage, which is um, me and holding on to uh, my whistle and my, <laughs> my uh, 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 
raincoat and the fedora. But what's evolved was at the same time I was working on the book, I said to my designer, I want a book that looks like a film noir. Mm -hmm. I wanted the book that, uh, in effect, uh, seemed exciting and different. I wanted to attach, uh, to grab the attention of a potential reader. So we ended up calling it The Death of HR with the subtitle, Who Killed Harriet Rose Job? And with your help, here it is. It's fantastic in terms of um, the way it looks. And the, the contents of the book is black and white with dashes of red. And I guess I, I got that from an old uh, Broadway show that I saw that was designed by Edwin Gorey, uh, or what might have been a masterpiece theater, come to think of it, mm -hmm. where uh, the titles, you might recall, is all black and white with a splash. It was Dracula. Yeah. All black and white with a splash of red from the blood. So I had the idea to create a crime scene, which was in the PowerPoint, which I had built for me and I built a, a first version of it showing the crime scene tape and showing the red slipper and showing a red stapler mm -hmm. and I translated that into the keynote presentation in more recent times which has gotten me a lot of good visibility and this screenshot that we're looking at is me on stage coming across the body of Miss Harriet Rose Job who was found dead with a mouse cord wrapped around her neck and in the book I set the stage in the in the early chapters about Harriet's uh, attitude, and in fact, when I do the keynote tied to this, I have Harriet walking to work through the streets of New York City, thinking out loud about her day and how she just wants to get through the day and really do nothing, and, and she gets invited to a late uh, email, uh, an email inviting her to a late meeting with senior management at 5.30, and then the next morning, she's found dead. Mm -hmm. So I set the stage with a bunch of suspects, uh, like um, uh, payroll and benefits and you uh, resources and shareholder <laughs> and uh, Arturo Intelligente, artificial intelligence. And I just took it and started to write and combined uh, a bunch of presentations that I've used over the year. And lo and behold, I ended up with the narrative that's uh, in the book that starts with Harriet and shows why uh, she had the attitude of being an administrative person, didn't have the characteristics that are needed by a new company or a company that's looking to move forward and, um, and, and be a leader in their industry. She, uh, she basically had um, no intuition. She had no initiative. She had no clout. I talked about the concept of clout. That's another presentation I've done over the years about personal and professional clout. Mm -hmm. and again, uh, some things stick with me, and I think this ended up sticking with me from a New York Times article written in the Clinton administration where they had a diagram of, of uh, a circular circumference diagram of people who were friends of Bill. And uh, the sphere of influence of the people that had impact on the presidency of the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. So I created this, and they talked about who had influence and clout and the attributes of somebody who had an office near him, mm -hmm. uh, who was part of his inner circle, or somebody he grew up with. So I translated that into what's in the book, which is like an anecdotal clout uh, questionnaire, which helps my reader understand their, their ratings or their score in their personal influence, their job mm -hmm. title has points, their proximity yeah. to the most senior person in HR and to their leadership in the company, where they even conduct meetings anecdotally, if it's in, the, in their office, their boss's office, or the cafeteria <laughs> as, a, mm -hmm. as a lower rating. So it was all a lot of fun, and I, I basically put all of this together, uh, tying the presentations about uh, Harriet Rose Job, the, who killed her, clout and influence and then uh, another part of the book as as the readers will see is working on a team mm -hmm. and i felt one of the things that targeted harriet rose job is that she was a loner yeah she was uh, she didn't share she wasn't a collaborator and i believe that hr has to listen to the workforce and has to participate in all kinds of activities w with the workforce and senior management and work on teams throughout the global organization. So the mm -hmm. whole concept of uh, another speech that I tied into from uh, a science fiction genre, which was um, the movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, some concepts about that, that in the book where um, as a keynote, when I used to give a speech, I would use uh, pieces of that movie 
uh, and, and overlay it with, uh, instead of planet project. And I so think on the surface, it might sound like these things don't connect together. Like in a lot of ways, it kind of seems like there's one yeah. thing over here and one thing over here, but the book itself, it all connects from start to finish in a very cohesive way. And it complements your keynote quite well with your, your, and I, I keep saying theatrical. I don't know what word yeah. you would actually use, but it really it is. Like, it. It's like theater, right? So well, what was the, what yeah. what's that? No, that's what I'm hoping that it is. It's a story and storytelling seems to be the way that uh, people are getting their messages across. So I just took the story of Harriet Rowe's job and made it into a cautionary tale uh, mm -hmm. about why she ended up, uh, what was the cause of her demise and who mm -hmm. the suspects were and the, and the reasons that each suspect had as to why they felt that the way she behaved as a function of HR, uh, personalized or humanized, mm -hmm. uh, led to them saying, hey, we don't want this type of person in our company and why? Yeah. And then I put in the book the things to do to prevent that from happening to my mm -hmm. readers. Yeah. Can you do a show and tell with the book itself? I'm looking at my copy, but I would love for you to, um, there we go. And then okay. kind of just uh, flip through the inside because it's it's such a kind of a, a quick read, but there's so much depth to the information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. There's all kind. here are some of the, uh, uh, the comments from when we canvassed the crime scene, we interviewed. Yeah. Uh, yep. Like, we interviewed Benny Fitz and payroll <laughs> and shareholder and mm -hmm. auto art sourcing for outsourcing <laughs> and ed economy, the economy. Mm -hmm. So I have in the book in various types of fonts, uh, the comments that the detective, Mr. Uh, detective Miller heard mm -hmm. and the thoughts of the detective after interviewing each suspect as to why that person might be a suspect. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went on and we, there were a number of, uh, of, uh, of suspects who had a reason for HR to be uh, eliminated, yeah. including Senior Juan Managemento, <laughs> who I call Senior Management, mm -hmm. and uh, Buzz Provement, and Sue Systems, and I just had a, a, a good time with it. And mm -hmm. you know, these are my interview notes yeah. uh, yeah. with the suspects. And in the keynote that I do, I also had people, uh, the last one I did up in Albany, I had my client actually um, uh, ask for volunteers, and we got plenty who wanted to play the role of the four key suspects. And that's also in uh, the video of one of my keynotes mm -hmm. where they had a script, and then they went off script, and I went off script, and we were all talking, and nice. uh, I was the detective pounding on the table. And it's all kind of covered in the book as well as to why uh, uh, Ed Conomy wanted Harriet Rose job out of the way, or mm -hmm. why senior management wanted somebody who was deemed an obstacle out of the way mm -hmm. for preventing the company to perform. Yeah. So once I set that stage up, I then wanted, wanted to tell the people what they should do mm -hmm. uh, to prevent themselves from being targeted. So that's, that's the other part of it. So who, who is the target audience of this then? So like, who is the ideal person that's going to pick this book up and say, this is totally something I need to read. It's going to benefit me in X, Y, Z ways. Like, what does that look like? Um, I think that the, um, the target audience or the, the best reader for me is somebody who is entrenched in HR, who believes in HR, mm -hmm. and, is, is, and two ways of looking at it. Loves the function of HR, wants the function to be strategic, wants the function to be considered value added, providing information. And in the book, I talk about moving from data management to information craftsmanship. So basically, get out from under a simple ad hoc report for a point in time and do modeling and forecasting to show a strategic. Uh, direction and a strategic value-added actionable insight. Mm -hmm. So the reader of this book would be one that's either uh, wants to prove that, I give them some examples of metrics that they could generate, or a person who seems to be blocked and, or, and wants to know how to, how to unblock senior management and to educate them mm -hmm. by using some of the tools in the book that basically says, look, I could be doing better for this company. I could add value. Give me the tools. Give me the new software. 
give me the budget to put in a new vendor that will indicate, that will sell me or sell our company an integrated HR payroll benefits software or a talent management software or an applicant tracking software using the feature functions of the cloud and using employee self-service and manager self-service and, mm -hmm. and having something that's attractive to the new workforce, which is, you know, the generation X, Ys, and Zs. Mm -hmm. um, so it's any reader who is either loving HR, wants to do more, uh, and, and has um, a need to understand how to do more, but also on the, on the flip side is a person who's stuck in HR because they are not viewed as strategically valued. And this would be giving them the argument mm -hmm. to say, hey, what about us? Yeah. Just like in the book, there's a section on HR's new role of cyber awareness on the part of the workforce, where HR should say, hey, this isn't just an IT and a security problem. Mm -hmm. Insider threats is a message that we know how to deliver. We know how to message to our workforce. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't HR be involved with security, with IT, and say, listen, we need training on best practices and how to safeguard our systems. And HR systems is one of many that have personal data on it that needs mm -hmm. to be looked at closely and preventing hacking and, and threats from inside or external hacking. Absolutely. So that's also a part of the appendix of the book saying, here's another thing that uh, you should do. Mm -hmm. So that so it all came together. I'm happily uh, to say with this with this book uh, yeah. as both uh, a tool to help um, somebody advance within the function of HR if they believe in it, mm -hmm. and also a tool to help educate their management on what they could be doing for their company, mm -hmm. so that the company can then free up the administration, mm -hmm. reduce the workload of administrivia, and allow HR. HR to be much more strategic and interdepartmental partnering. Absolutely. So how would you define your big picture purpose? I feel like in so many ways you, you pretty much have just defined it, but you know, what's the overarching goal that you are trying to, uh, you know, it, the impact that you're trying to make on the world? Um, I think it would be for, to combine my passion to be a uh, messenger um, throughout um, the world, so to speak, on the importance of this uh, of the function of HR mm -hmm. and show how it has evolved and do it in such a way that I'm remembered as somebody that's got a fun message that's energetic and a typical uh, New York uh, presentation of something that sticks with the audience, which they'll remember, which seems to be... Um, at least in the keynotes and the speeches that I do based on, on the title itself of working, but also for me to get the feedback from my audience and, and, and feel good about giving them what they need to improve themselves personally, mm -hmm. increase their sphere of influence, thus their clout, mm -hmm. and also to increase the company's uh, perception and welcoming of a function of HR that takes advantage of the technology that's available by so many software vendors uh, that are great, that are helpful, mm -hmm. that understand how HR should be positioned in a mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. And when I teach to my students who are uh, in the MBA programs at uh, NYU and Manhattan College and Long Island University, I tell them in one of the sessions that HR, unlike finance and unlike uh, accounting and unlike uh, uh, production, is such a wide uh, function in itself that there's at least 20 sub-functions that can report to the top level of HR person in a yeah, company, absolutely. the CHRO. Mm -hmm. Anywhere from applicant tracking, recruiting, succession planning, and compensation, benefits, HR technology, and payroll. There's like 20 tick marks in an org chart reporting to a CHRO yeah. that basically says, hey, HR, this is a hot place to be. Hey, students, this is a hot place to, mm -hmm. to put your career in, uh, instead of, in my view, the boring world of, uh, of finance. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so that's me trying to just excite my students, excite my audiences. I have an amazing tool now with the book um, that uh, spreads the message and gives people what I want them to get out of this, which is um, understanding of the power of HR. 
Absolutely. And, and to avoid their own personal demise as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. So if you were, you know, if you were speaking directly to a college or higher education institution of some sort and making your case for why they should consider putting your book as part of their curriculum, how would you make that case? Great question. And uh, I'm trying to do that now. Uh, but I think I would say that this is a story. It's not a textbook. Mm -hmm. It should be used as a potential supplemental text in any uh, class, uh, uh, in any course that's got human resources or organizational behavior in, 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 in its title as mm -hmm. part of the syllabus. It's not quite a mini, it's not, it's not quite a mini case or a case history, mm -hmm. but it's a different take on a case history. Mm -hmm or a mini case that they students like. It's more of a interesting whodunit is what I tried mm -hmm. to do. Or at least put out the potential of the potential whodunits and to why they did it and what the people in HR have to deal with when people perceive them as being negative. So, mm -hmm. um, or bureaucratic or an obstacle. So I would say to anybody involved with text books and choosing uh, textbooks for curriculum in the fundamentals of human resources management or organizational behavior, this would be a great complement to the textbooks of this era that talk about all the rules and regulations behind the function of HR. I would agree. And I also think that the price point of this is right for it being a supplemental text. We're not talking about it being a $60 textbook. It's, you know, $26.95 for the paperback, or if someone wants the hardcover version, it's, it's $36.95. So, you know, it, it's very affordable for a student or some, you know, someone who's going to be going into the HR profession, or maybe someone who just, you know, is in a smaller company and all of a sudden HR was just dropped on their desk and now they have to figure out what do I actually do with this? I think that it, it paints right. the big high level picture of many different functions under this, which is obviously as a result of all of your work in the space and all of the, you know, the education that you do with your students. So I think it really is, it's, um, I know even if you're not interested in HR, I feel like there's still kind of like this, this story to it that makes it interesting. And it's a quick read. Like it really, it doesn't have to be a long and arduous uh, textbook type read, which many HR books right. are, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> this you know? is true. I've had, I've had people who've taken a look at the book in various drafts and they, it took them maybe 35, 40 minutes to get the, the gist of it and to go mm -hmm. through it. And you know what? I laugh because it, it, a lot of the content came from original PowerPoint presentations mm -hmm. over my experience as a, uh, a lecturer, speaker, keynote speaker, breakout session mm -hmm. on topics starting with who killed Harriet Rowe's job mm -hmm. and clout and HR people are from Mars and systems people are from Venus, which is mm -hmm. one of my science fiction talks where, I, again, I talked about the role of HR and, and it's and uh, and the impact it has on on a large scale corporation mm -hmm. for the universe, so to speak. Yeah. So it isn't. I, I wrote it that way, and and you supported me every step of the way in building a textbook or a book that's fun to read that has mm -hmm. uh, suspects and mug shots and. Yeah, I and, love the way uh, the inside looks. It's it's definitely a, a really cool a really cool yeah. layout, and it's just visually easy to read. Why not, can you flip over to the the back side so people can see the crime scene on the back as well? Uh, uh, the crime scene on the back, yeah. That's oh yeah, the, the, the bottom part, the um, like the chalk the outline, like it's that level of uh, <laughs> uh, the theatrics. Yeah. I don't know if they can see. Up. It. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I feel like your book is a really good example of what someone can do when they are a keynote speaker and they need some kind of supplemental material to, to either provide as a uh, part of the package of somebody coming to see you speak or they buy it as some kind of ancillary, you know, resource for them. I feel like your book is a really good example of how you can kind of make it fun educational but also entertaining on a topic that is not usually seen as uh, overly entertaining thank you yes and that's 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 music to my ears of course and i'm holding this up this each section has kind of this film noir detective mm -hmm. look to it and you can see in the, the very dark the detective is leaning over the body yeah 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 
So uh, I just had a lot of fun with it. And uh, here's another page that looks uh, mm -hmm. surprising. Yeah, I, so that demonstrates what, a, what an easy, easy, fun, and helpful read it is for someone who's really, like I said, I think really the people, especially the people who get dumped with a, an HR function that they weren't expecting. Because I think that happens a lot in organizations. Absolutely. But and obviously, uh, it gets me out and about. I love speaking in front of groups. Yes, I get nervous when there's a couple of thousand people in the audience, but the, the, the idea of having my, my client who brings me in to give a speech to have some of their employees play the role mm -hmm. of the detectives was amazing. They just got into it, <laughs> they ad-libbed, and you know, I banged on the table as the detective watching too much Law & Order on TV, <laughs> uh, you know, that type of yeah. stuff. And the crime scene tape worked out, and uh, uh, it just, it, and, and, I, the people that uh, volunteered during the keynote uh, obviously, they all got copies of, uh, of the book, uh, mm -hmm. but also they loved it and they enjoyed playing even the body that had to lie there for about 15 to 20 minutes yeah. until I resurrected Harriet Rowe's job. <laughs> Altogether, we had some sort of uh, uh, phrases that we spoke and it changes for each client mm -hmm. engagement, but it, she was resurrected and knew that what, what she had to do to mm -hmm. prove her value so she wouldn't be... Uh, a target. Yeah. So, oh, it's been a great uh, uh, process. Uh, PYP has been fantastic in supporting this, and um, I'm thrilled. Um, and you know, maybe I'll start writing a second book. I, I don't know, but uh, I'm telling you, once it. people do the first, they get the bug, and all of a sudden they're they're working on seconds, thirds. We have a, a variety of authors right now that are working on either their second or their third book. So. All right. It's a thing. Like once you do one, it, you know the the hard part's over. Now, now you at least know what's uh, what to expect. So to kind of uh, you know wrap things up and conclude. Number one, it's great to have you as part of our PYP author family, which is you know great always problem. exciting and proximity wise. I'm in Connecticut. You're in New York, which is always awesome too. You know we have a we yeah. definitely have a concentration of authors in Connecticut and New York, and then we certainly have authors that are all over the country as well. So right. if someone wants to hire you, you know, talk to you, get some kind of consultation around what you do. What is the easiest way for them to get in touch with you? Well, uh, they could go to uh, my email. They can go to my website. My, my email is mark at markssmillerassociates.com. I also have an old AOL mail, which shows you how old <laughs> I am, which is, most, is, is the most frequent one that I use, but Mark, M-A-R-C, at Mark S. Miller Associates.com gets to me. I have a phone. It's a landline still, and they can <laughs> call me on my phone. They can go to my website, which is that name, dot com, mm -hmm. and um, I'm easy to get a hold of. Uh, through LinkedIn, through LinkedIn, of course, and uh, mm -hmm. I have a Facebook page, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, yep. and that's basically it. I'm, I'm very approachable. I enjoy it, and um, I'm on a couple of speaker groups within LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm out there and I love it. And um, it makes me feel good to, uh, to be in front of people who are at various stages of their career in HR and show them that they're in a valuable place for a company, even with today's mm -hmm. changes uh, of uh, the working demographics. Mm -hmm. Oh, another part of the book, which we didn't talk about, is uh, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. which I do have in the index uh, of uh, a couple of good uh, uh, articles and opinion pieces about why HR will survive mm -hmm. and not be totally replaced by robotics and artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Because the, dealing, the deal is with sentiment and the fact that machines haven't been able to think yet. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do repetitive tasks, but yeah, HR will be impacted, but it won't be replaced. And there will yeah. be a change. And that change goes along with what I'm saying, mm -hmm. being more strategic. And robots cannot, and artificial intelligence cannot yet be strategic to the point that uh, HR goes away. Yeah, thankfully. and I think that's kind of a reassuring message that uh, I'm sure people are, you know, depending on what your role is in the HR, you know, Concerned, right. and I think a lot of people are concerned about artificial intelligence broadly, not not specific. To oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. it's yeah. a big question. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you know, it's it's fun to speak, especially in my students. They're young; some of them don't work yet, mm -hmm. and they're in their late twenties in the MBA programs, and 
they have had, they've come to me during the class and after the semester's over saying they had no idea. To this day, they think HR is just a bureaucratic obstacle. Mm. And that's somebody to call when they have a, a, a problem with their benefits or mm. their paycheck is wrong yeah. or they want to find out what their vacation and sick day balances are. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. And yeah, I, HR is so much bigger than that and so much more integral to the business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and there are people like myself and Dave Ulrich, of course, and others out there that have made a career of being the messenger about the value. Mm -hmm. And there's tons of conferences around the world about uh, HR. Um, uh, and Disrupt HR is, is another subtitle within the Disrupt uh, Foundation that's in many cities where the concept is people, again, speak for five minutes on topics mm -hmm. uh, related to workforce, not yeah. per se. HR. So it's all great. And um, I, I just love the uh, opportunity to work with your people and yourself. And um, I'm excited that the book is now available on Amazon and mm -hmm. however which other ways we do it. Yes. So if uh, anyone is interested in checking out your book, they can certainly go to Amazon.com and type in The Death of HR, Mark Miller. That brings it up. Um, again, it's available in ebook, paperback, hardcover, depending on when you're watching this. Um, they may or may not all be there. They're all kind of in a, a population stage at the moment. Um, and then additionally, on our website, which is PublisherPurposePress.com. So we have your information there will embed this video into that site, into that page as well. So that way, um, you know, you're to make sure that people have easy access to all of our authors. And hopefully, you know, there'll be a video at some point in the near future where you and I are together doing some kind of collaborator, collaborative type of uh, thing. I don't know what that is yet. Um, in addition with other authors of ours. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, definitely I'm thinking Q1 of 2019, we'll be able to pull something together, which will be incredible. So I so appreciate working with you. It's a fantastic to have you as part, uh, you know, part of our, our catalog of authors and our Love family it. and it's good stuff. I appreciate what you're doing for the world. And I appreciate what you've done for me and for the message and uh, your entire, your purpose and your whole theme is fantastic to give off authors, not just me, anybody who has a message that mm -hmm. they feel passionate about, they've got, an amazing resource in you and your team. Fantastic. Thank you. Those are very but, kind words. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate everything you've done. All right. Well, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. You can check us out at publisherpurposepress.com. If you want to email me, you are you know, directly welcome to email me at jen with two N's at publisherpurposepress.com, and I will happily guide you along any of your publishing journeys. So uh, don't, don't make it hard. Um, you can shortcut the process by talking to someone who, who can help, which happens to be us. So uh, right. thank you, Mark, and uh, we'll talk to everyone soon. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Have a good day yourself. Bye. All the best. Thank you.